Epic 7 released on November 7th, 2018, and it's an anime-style gacha RPG on mobile, and it truly is a great game filled with amazing cinematics and a full, diverse cast of heroes to win through the gacha or through grinding. In today's video, I am joined by the awesome YouTuber Chaos DTV. His YouTube channel is Chaos Inc. and he has recently started playing the game. He's going to provide his fresh take on the game along with my feelings after playing it on and off since the launch began. And we're going to be talking about the state of the game in 2022. What's going on Source community? I'm Chaos DTV here over on the Chaotic King channel and I'll be discussing with Sori here about the current state of Epic 7. As I am currently a brand new player to the world of the and the community of Epic 7 and Sori here being a veteran at the game. So there's a lot of stuff that we need to discuss and I'm sure you'll love the game and the game has changed a lot. So let's jump right into it and I'll hand it back over to Sora. Thanks for that Chaos, I am super glad to have you here. I actually found out about this game back when it was still only released in Korea and I had to give it a try. Those cinematics really did it for me. I knew I had to try it out. I definitely did fall in love with the game right from the beginning. The animated anime scenes were breathtaking and the story was really engaging too. And the waifu characters were just absolutely gorgeous. How could you not love this game? And then when it finally came out for the global audience, I actually was pretty hardcore into the game in the early stages. I had even created a guild and we were growing really fast. Unfortunately, due to some annoying backseat driving by certain new guild members, I ended up deciding I wasn't in the right state of mind to be dealing with running a guild. So I gave it up to someone else and went solo for a while, eventually just being a quiet member in a smaller guild. So as I'm still getting used to playing all of these mobile games and really enjoying mobile games, I've decided to find a lot of RPGs, especially MMOs. But thanks to watching MMO Bytes video on Epic 7 last year, that's initially how I learned about Epic 7 and man was I glad I found out about this game. The fact that the game is still fully like watching an anime as well as it being a turn based RPG is what truly grabbed my attention and I knew I needed to have this game immediately. Not to mention recently the devs decided to drop a high definition pack in which it pretty much improved the game's how the entire game looked, the entire cinematic scenes and everything from there. Not to mention I can agree with Sora here and the game has some very gorgeous waifus. I tell you what, they are gorgeous as ever and the devs know exactly what they're doing with these character models. Back to you Sora. Currently the game has gone through some huge changes which started last year, especially with the leveling process. In the past you had to do what is called dog walking which was to put two dogs in your party and grind experience with two of your strongest members. Eventually these dogs would get to max level and could ascend them to the next star ranking and then repeat the process over again until you got the dogs to the desired star ranking to feed them to your heroes you were wanting to ascend in star rank. This took a long time and ultimately it's what made me drop the game in the first year of the game's release. Combined with the fact that there was no auto repeat from missions and this made Meant that you had to manually repeat each mission over and over again. It just took too long and for a grind heavy game like this, it just really wasn't practical unless you didn't mind spending all your time on one game. Which for a game hopper like myself, it just wasn't something I could do. Also, the penguin experience fodder was elemental based meaning they would give more experience when fed to the matching elemental heroes. But now, that system is out of the window. Thankfully, the devs have done some huge changes and made things a lot easier for their player base. Now, the experienced penguins are no longer elemental based, meaning you can now feed them to any hero regardless of their elemental affinity and get the full experience offered from them. Also, the method of obtaining experience penguins is easier now. If you have a full team of max level heroes, you can grind any story mode or side story map and all excess experience will be turned into experience penguins. This however doesn't work in hunts, spirit altar, labyrinth, abyss, 
automaton tower and halls of trials. So keep that in mind when farming wyvern or other hunts, you won't get experienced penguins from those. So leveling up fodder for heroes is a lot easier now and I'm truly grateful for that. Let's not forget the pet system too, something that wasn't in the game at all in the early days of the game. The pets allow you to repeat grind a map depending on how many stars your pet accompanying you is. At 4 star rank, your pet will allow you to repeat grind up to 20 times. Unfortunately, it is not an endless repeat grind, but it is better than nothing. My experiences in Epic 7 has been quite the bumpy road, but I've been figuring it out. So since I'm extremely new and my experiences will be relative to anyone who is actually starting out, who will be playing from as of last year or so, keep that in mind before you download or during your first few hours into the game. A lot of the things were very confusing and not a lot was truly explained over than the initial tutorial that came with the game as a new player, in which I can tell that a lot of stuff was kind of handed to me as a new player, so of course I wouldn't go through too much of players like Sora, but my first initial experience and my first initial mistake is that it's kind of kicking me in the butt right now is not knowing not to pull all of my penguins into so many characters and just pick a good well-rounded team and stick to them, which I'll explain what penguins are later. So after that, the mistake I'm currently using my wyvern team which is my all ice team and running them through the fire wyvern hunts as I noticed that these hunts give out the best gear to farm and as well as my new PvE team as well as PvP team. Another issue I've come across which piggybacks on my first point is the game needs to be a little bit more generous with leveling characters especially once you get further in the game as I'm a count level 27 and on episode 2 chapter 4-7. The only way I've noticed to level up fast is waiting every day for my penguins to hatch which really slows down my progress when all of the modes Epic 7 has to offer which there is an abundance of. The next experience I'm currently going through is in the insane difficulty like spike especially when my most powerful heroes are dying in simple missions and then getting to the boss is even crazier so I feel like if I started the game again it would make my life easier as I would know what to do and what not to do. The summons are pretty fire. I got lucky a couple times as I am a free free to, to play player. The game does fall short on explaining what equipment goes to who, what characters can benefit from equipments, what is my speed set, what is my health set. Like it definitely fills in that department of explaining everything. I did have to do a little bit of extra digging. I did have a co-worker at my current job micro center that he kind of been kind of helping me through and as well as Sora's as well it's crazy that like, there's so much to offer with this game but they do need to work on actually explaining how this game technically works with newer players a lot of new players will see very quickly in how the game can be very overwhelming with every feature that is in the game and you will have to grind the game to get some unlockable features and even free heroes without doing summons even though i have noticed the free characters by the name of angelica furious momocracy and Alexa are solid characters that can get you pretty far into the game and they're 100% free and despite the leveling and the equipment no matter what. Epic 7 does give out some decent equipment for your heroes and some of these equipments you can still use them even in the harder stages which is still crazy. Once you level up all the equipment to at least level 9 you can pretty much contend with most enemies you come across no matter what mode you're on. Even though I did have a hard time through my initial first hours into the game, I can say a lot of the new features like pets and a constant flow of currency to allow me to summon frequently for powerful characters. All of the hunts being available for me to grind and give to my best teams, I could say it is rather easy for us new players, but what game isn't easier after a few years of being out? Thanks to the new features, it allows me to still continue playing the game without a roadblock until I get higher up where the difficulty is so massive that it will be harder for me to progress through the story but thanks to all the available content like hunts side stories of the characters urgent missions and the list goes on as well as including the pvp arenas there's just so much to do in epic 7 that you can still enjoy the game and even if you're in a roadblock in the story visually the game hasn't changed much but i feel like if you do not have a pretty decent device some hero's ultimate skills could lag your system a bit the anime aesthetic is truly beautiful and i love all the character designs i do feel like some fodder character artwork is very different and it does feel a little out of place at times but that's just a minor gripe doesn't affect the game overall so that's not a really big issue. As a 2D anime gotcha RPG, I'd definitely say this is one of the prettiest ones for sure. 
as I said earlier in the video, the graphics in this game is top notch and probably one of the best I've seen so far in a mobile game. Granted, I am still trying to play a lot of the mobile games to get myself out there for the massive variety of RPGs to play, but Epic 7 right now is taking the cake and running home with it. Way before they dropped the HD pack, the game still looked beautiful and very stunning. It surprised me the most that a game could look this good on a mobile device. I am currently playing Epic 7 on my iPhone 13 and I was originally playing it on my iPhone XR so my device was still able to handle all the action that can take place in a game. The game has two different types of ways to showcase the graphics through the characters ultimates as you can see a whole scene through their ults and when you're playing through these certain story missions you can come across a couple cinematic scenes or even it's like it's crazy like there's specific missions that will have cinematic scenes depending if it's a big event that happened in a story which I'm not gonna spoil anything anything for anybody who's trying to get into the story. I have to admit, in the early days of the game, I honestly thought the game wasn't that generous with their gems or in general. But I realize now that I was very wrong in my thinking. The game is incredibly generous and hands out freebies all the time during events or special occasions. During the anniversary last year, they handed out 5 star heroes, and also tons of other extra goodies, as well as 10 free summons daily during the anniversary. I got a ton of new 5 star heroes during that event, and even during the Chinese New Year event, they did another 10 free summons every day. As a 100% free to play player, you do have to be choosy with who you summon though. I have personally been saving all my summon tokens for the next big event banner, but if you're planning on picking this game up in 2022, just know that the game does treat their player base pretty generously with freebies if you stick with the game. Just keep an eye out for all the special events and you will not be disappointed. Man, the generosity of Epic 7. Now, I can agree with you, Sora, on this one, as the generosity is probably one of the best I've seen in gacha games so far, especially since I came from one of the, my first gacha games, which would be Dokkan Battle and as well as Dragon Ball Legends. That's kind of like how I got my first feel of what gacha games are. Now, I've noticed Epic 7 was amazing towards players who are free and can exactly well out on the game. Every weekend, you can get one 10 summon spins for three days. That's technically 30 summons for the entire weekend. And if you're lucky enough, like I was, and you can see a lot of four to five star champions, gems and other currency in the game, I've received frequently a lot during my playthrough and especially gold. I have almost 5 million gold. Only thing I do wish Epic 7 can be more generous is with the penguins because without it, it makes it so much harder to level up your champions now there's probably some secret ways i've been talking to sora he's kind of been helping me but from just a new player's perspective you don't know this so all you know is just like man i have no penguins and this is only thing i have to actually receive penguins is finding them randomly throughout missions getting them through rewards or hatching them which is a time consuming thing the game itself is great, and the story content is fantastic, but I do want to warn you, the difficulty does spike in the later episodes of the story. I myself have been stuck on episode 3 for months, and they already released episode 4. But here I am, stuck on episode 3, stage 4-9, and I have been in limbo there ever since. I have had to look up on Reddit on how to get past this stage, and in order to do so, I have a lot of heroes to grind in order to get past this roadblock. It is unfortunate that the difficulty is so crazy, and I would love to advance, but I just can't for the time being. So I'm just patiently growing all the heroes I need, as well as making a Wyvern team that is stronger in order to easily grind stage 11 of the Wyvern hunt for gear advancement stones. Now, my thoughts on the difficulty. Like I've said earlier, the difficulty is insane. Now, I feel like I've leveled up the wrong heroes, but I made it work. Some of the missions in episode two is still giving me a hard time, especially due to me putting all of my leveling in the wrong heroes, especially if you're trying to do hunts and PVE and stuff. You have to make sure you know what team you like and stick with them so none of your stuff is spread out too thin. This can fail new players if you're not careful, but I stopped myself in time. 
so I have enough teams that I can focus on story and as well as with runs to get some juicy sweet gear. Overall, I'd say that Epic 7 is going strong in 2022 and I truly recommend it to anyone who loves anime games on mobile. Even though the difficulty spike is real in the main missions, there is still plenty to do in order to get your heroes stronger. The game is always releasing new side stories that offer plenty of items as long as you grind for their tokens and reputation, which combined with the ability to now repeat missions up to 20 times is a pretty easy feature. Just pop on a movie and let your heroes grind the missions and there you go. Epic 7 is a seriously grind heavy game so if grinding isn't something you're looking for, this may not be the game for you. But if you have the patience, this game could be a rewarding experience for you. I hope you'll all consider giving this game a go if you haven't already. And if you're an old veteran of the game who didn't know about the changes, maybe it's time to jump back into the game and try it out again. You might be pleasantly surprised. My final thoughts on Epic 7 are outstandingly great. Please, please, please go download Epic 7 right now. It is available free for everyone, whether you're on iOS or Android. Please go download it. Even with the difficulty spikes, the overwhelming features that will take a bit to learn and all the characters that are in the game are so different that you lose sight of who you want to play with because it's all fun and cool to watch them fight. The game is still expanding dramatically and I've barely finished most of the content that is available. So if you love grinding out RPGs, this is the game for you. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed our state of the game in 2022 for Epic 7. These all are our personal thoughts and experiences on the game. We'd love to hear your experiences with the game in the comments below. A huge thank you to Chaos DTV for being a guest on this video. I truly appreciate you coming by and I'm looking forward to seeing you again in another video in the future. Thank you everyone for joining Sora and I today. It was a pleasure getting to chat it up with you, Sora, and your community on Epic 7. And I can't wait to discuss more mobile games with you all. If you're a fan of RPGs and as well as tech, as I will basically be talking about the gaming side of gaming things of tech, then definitely come over to my channel, Chaotic Inc. We can chat it up over there. Make sure you subscribe to Sora Sin. Love you guys. And as always, if you want to chat it up with me, come follow me on Twitter chaos dtv and as always it's been your host here with chaos dtv and sora sin and as always my outcasts and sora's community the vamp squad signing out peace thanks for watching this is sora sin wishing you all a great day please remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon and follow me and chaos on all our socials in the description and pinned comment below Thank you